Hey, welcome back to K-12 Analytics Engineering. I am Marcos L. Kozer, and today we're gonna to be talking about how you can query your EdFi ODS that's running in Google Cloud SQL from within Google BigQuery, and how you use DBT to manage that work. This is important because after you've landed data in your EdFi ODS, you then need to move it to a data store that's more appropriate for analytics. Google BigQuery is a great option, both because it's a columnar store and because of its deep integration with Google Data Studio. Let's talk about row and column store databases. So the EdFi ODS runs on Postgres and SQL Server, and both are record-based storage databases. Previously in the channel, we've implemented a Postgres ODS. So when you think about row-based databases, those databases are storing each row together on disk. And that's what we want for a transactional operational data store. Because what we're doing is we're retrieving full rows of data. Maybe we're updating a specific row of data. Column store databases like Google BigQuery, well, those are storing each column together on a disk. And that's what we want in our analytics store because the type of SQL queries that are being run in Google BigQuery are different than what would be run on an, on an operational data store. So imagine in Google BigQuery, you're writing a SQL statement that is selecting every school, every grade level, and then it's running a sum on a absence column because it's getting the total absences per grade level per school, and then maybe comparing campus to campus on the same grade level. One cool thing about columnar databases too is you don't have to really worry about how wide the table is, which you do have to worry about on a record-based database because if you're pulling an entire record or an entire row and there's a lot of columns, you're pulling a lot of, you're pulling a lot of data. Whereas with solutions like Google BigQuery, you can have 100 columns but if you're selecting only school name, grade level, and that absence column, then you're actually only selecting three columns and Google BigQuery is not picking up those other 97 from disk. All right, so how do we actually move data from our EdFi ODS into Google BigQuery? So there are a lot of ways to do that and we'll be covering a few different methods here in this channel. The one we're gonna talk about today though are running federated queries on your Cloud SQL instance from within Google BigQuery. In Google BigQuery, we can create an external connection to our Cloud SQL instance, and then that will enable you to use a special function in Google BigQuery called external query. So with external query, you write your SQL statement, you call external query, and you pass in two things. You pass in a connection name, and you pass in a SQL statement. And when you run this in Google BigQuery, BigQuery actually goes out and it runs that SQL statement on your Cloud SQL database. So in our case, it runs this Postgres SQL statement on your EdFi ODS, and then it shows the results back in Google BigQuery. Once you have that, you can save that query as a SQL view, or even you can save it as a, a native BigQuery table, which is awesome. Now, once you start having a lot of SQL queries though, you need a way to manage them. And BigQuery does give you something called schedule queries in there, but I tend to stay away from that. And that's because I like when I can have my code checked into a version control system. I can have it in a place like GitHub, and then I can have this environment that's more like a, like a typical software developer and how they work, where you're tracking every single change. And so for that, we're gonna use DBT. DBT stands for Data Build Tool, and it's an awesome tool that allows analytics engineers to really manage the transformation work within their data warehouse. We're gonna use DBT to actually manage all the SQL transformation work that goes from the EdFi ODS data and other source data that we'll get into, into our actual data mart tables, into our staging views, and into our reporting tables. Let's dive in now and let's really take a look at how this works. Here we are back in our Google Cloud project, and I'm gonna walk you through the various pieces. So we see a SQL instance down here, and this is our EdFi ODS. If I switch to Data Grip, we can see the various databases. And in the previous video, I showed you the EdFi ODS 
where we installed the analytics middle tier. So if I expand that, we have views such as students school dim. Double click on that. We can see a nice denormalized view. This is our dimension that ties students with schools. And it includes things such as their name, their enrollment, uh, date key, their grade level, and other information. So there's our ODS. Now I'm going to switch to BigQuery and I've got my project. Now what I did was I clicked on Add Data and I clicked on External Data Source. And when I did that, I got this nice little modal where I could select Postgres and I can put in a bunch of information. So I can put in my Cloud SQL instance connection ID. I can choose a database name, username and password. That gave me an external connection and you'll see I have two set up. I have one for my EdFi ODS and then I have another one for a different ODS that I have in my SQL instance. When you have this external connection configured in BigQuery, you can use the external query function. So here in this tab, we have a SQL query. I'll try to make this a bit bigger for you. That says select all from external query and I'm passing in two things. The first thing I'm passing in is the external connection connection ID. And then the second thing I'm passing in is a SQL statement and this is a Postgres SQL statement. So select all from analytics.studentschooldim. And if I go back to data grip and I run this, it's gonna give me the same data that we're, we are already looking at, but I want you to see it start to finish. So I run this and I see the information. I go back to BigQuery where I have that external query and I run this and we see that same information here down here in the result. And so BigQuery just ran this SQL query on my Postgres database on the EdFi ODS and brought the results back here. So that's pretty powerful. And I can click save results and I can do things like save it to a BigQuery table if I wanted to. But I want this to refresh on a schedule because I want it to get updated nightly as data is changing in my ODS. And that is where DBT comes in. So I'm now going to switch over to another tab. And this is accessing cloud.getdbt.com. And I'll put a link down below in the description to get you to the DBT website where you can create an account and you can connect to BigQuery. So what I wanna show you here is under models, I have set up a model. So I decided the folder structure here. I went with Marts as a folder, reporting and staging. The idea being here is that we kind of start with Marts, and this is the kind of foundational layer of our analytics store. And often we build reporting tables off of them, which we'll get to but sometimes it can be nice to create something in the middle that gets reused by many reports. So let's keep on the student school DIM. So I have a file here called DIM student school. I like naming them with DIM at the beginning instead of the end. It's personal preference. That's what I like doing. Uh, and so that's why I have it named here. And so what I did was back in data grip and just a reminder, you can use PG admin if you want a free tool. I think data grip runs around a hundred dollars a year. Uh, but what I did was for student school dim, I right clicked on it and I went to go to DLL and it gave me the SQL query that's behind the database view. And so I copied the SQL query and instead of running what I did here, the select all from analytics.studentschooldim in DBT cloud, I put in Here's my external query. I put in the actual SQL query behind the database view. And the reason why I did that was because this allows me to then make minor edits uh, to the view uh, to get things that may not be in the core dimension that's provided by EdFi. Specifically, what I did for DIM Student School was I commented out these lines 
that caused this view to only show currently enrolled student, commented that out, and I put in some code to get the student's exit withdraw date because I wanted a dimension that showed me all students with any enrollment for the school year and included their entry date and their exit withdraw date. So that's the external query part. Above that, where I had the asterisk in BigQuery, in DBT Cloud, you can see I expanded it a little bit more. Uh, the reason being because in my BigQuery, um, I like to have the nice underscores between the words. So I like this snake case where everything is lowercase and I have these underscores. So I have a bunch of lines that do things like just alias this column uh, to include these underscores. So I can test to make sure this is working by right clicking and going to run query. Awesome. So that gives me the results that you see below. And so what I can do now is I can actually run this in dbt by clicking on the bottom and saying dbt run. I'm going to run just this specific model. So dim student school. And I'm going to hit enter. And it's going to go ahead and run this. Now dbt offers two different environments. Maybe there's more, but two in this example, which is a development environment that I get to work on that is my environment and then is a production environment where as I write code, I can push it into a different branch if you're familiar with Git and it can run separately. And let me show you what that actually means in BigQuery. So when I ran this in BigQuery, it created the student school dim, the dim student school under ML Coser EdFi ODS. So I expand this dim student school it is a table, it is a big query table, and it has the data that we've been looking at. And so that is my environment as a developer as I'm working on code. In DBT Cloud though, you can schedule a job to actually get run every single night to refresh your tables. And that gets put then under a different schema. So here we see a bunch of prods, and these are the production ones. So this is really powerful. This allows me to write SQL, test it out, connect it to things like Google Data Studio, and have a place to try that code out without messing up my production environment. Then once things are working, I can commit my changes to a main branch where the production run is run off of. Let me know in the comments below if you want a separate video that's just a deep dive on dbt and I'll get into some of those details more in depth there. But for now, what I want to show is one final thing, which is back in dbt cloud, I actually have many different what are called models set up. So you can already see that I have a bunch of other dimensions and I have a fact. I also have these staging dimensions and I created these because in things like student school dim, they'll frequently be something like a school key. And for you to get the actual school name, you need to join on dim school in order to have that. And so I just created a staging one where if we scroll down, I select the dim student school, I join on dim school, and that gives me that information. And then I use this staging one in all of my downstream SQL. So it just saves me a join in a lot of places because now I have student school key, student key, school key, school name, school type, because those are the two that I care about here, and then the other fields. So outside of Marts, I also have a reporting folder. This is where I store all of the tables that are directly connected to Google Data Studio. So Google Data Studio, when you connect your data, you have a whole bunch of options. But what I like to do is I like to manage all of my reporting SQL here in dbt, and that pr produces a table that Data Studio directly connects to. So let me walk you through what I'm, what I'm talking about here. So I have a file called school profile, and this school profile has a SQL statement here, which is selecting from my staging dim student school. It's joining on another dim of student LEA, and then one more down here. And it's selecting a bunch of columns and it's also doing some transformation work 
uh, to sub some values out, and then I do a race and ethnicity rollup. So I go ahead and I run this query, and I get what I'm referring to here as a reporting table. I'm getting the data in the format that I needed in for my Google Data Studio report, specifically for my school profile report. And then in Google Data Studio, I have my report. This is a very just simple report, but we'll get into more advanced ones later. I have a data source here called School Profile. If I edit that and I edit the connection, we can see I'm connecting to my project. I'm connecting to my own ML Coser dev environment, and then this table called School Profile. And so as I'm building this report, uh, I go ahead and I connect here, and then when I push it to production, I switch to my prod reporting and that school profile one. This then allows for a Google Data Studio report that is extremely performant and you can throw millions of rows at it and this is going to update really fast uh, and you can do a lot there because you're doing all of your SQL transformation work, you're writing all of your queries and you're getting all the way as far as you can to that reporting table and then you're just connecting that table to Google Data Studio. All right, so that's how you query your ODS from within Google BigQuery and how you manage all that SQL transformation work in DBT. So remember, the goal is here, all roads lead to the data warehouse for your extract and your load, and then the transformation happens at the warehouse level to get your data in the right format for your reports.